Tom, hello. Hey, how you doing? I'm doing well. Are you ready for another month of uh, productivity tips? I'm ready to win. Well, I don't want you to be that ready. Okay. That's, uh, <laughs> that's all right. So you're, you're already dominating the boards here, as we'll, we'll see here in a minute. Yeah. So, okay. Uh, all right. So I'm let's, okay with uh, that. <laughs> we'll go ahead and kick things off. Thanks for joining the Microsoft 365 Productivity Tips, the November Nexus. Where'd you come up with Nexus? I don't know. I'm doing a search on synonyms for different things. That's what I do. That's what I put these together is I go in and I look at, okay, let's look at the word battle. Uh, and uh, what are the synonyms? What are all the, the various, the variants that we could possibly get? And is there one that, uh, you know, that starts with an N? And for, for what it's worth, considering that like two years ago when we were doing this, I thought we had run everything out. I know. <laughs> the fact you're still coming up with stuff is rather impressive. Uh, I yeah yeah it's it's uh I, and, and like that we've got the December dust up happening next month. As dust well, up so. was good. Dust up like, I was really impressed with. Hyphenated words are okay. Yeah. Okay. Still I'll, I'll I'll give you the point there. Yeah. So I think we'll have to get creative for uh, the problem is are the J words January June and July. It's a yeah, lot. Yeah, we've used yeah. joust, we've used jostle, we've used yeah. all those. So, so we'll we'll get those. Well, thanks for joining. Uh, my name is Christian Buckley. I run a company called Collab Talk. I'm based out of Lehigh, Utah, uh, and you can uh, check out my blog at buckleyplanet.com. And of course, I always ask everybody, please go out and subscribe out on YouTube. You get the notifications, like the videos, because all of the recordings are out on the YouTube page. And uh, you can also find them on, on the blog and I'll share that link at the end as well. And I am a nine time Office Apps and Services MVP and Microsoft Regional Director. And with me is Tom. Oh, was that supposed to be like a potential, I will get Tom to freak out a little bit over the fact he's going up against a nine time MVP type. Oh, thing. No, way, way to try to earn the sympathy votes, Tom. You're already winning. <laughs> so yeah, anyway. <laughs> But I keep on pushing. <laughs> That's right. I am Tom. I am not a nine-time MVP. Uh, I work for Cambia Health Solutions, which is a health insurance company in the Pacific Northwest, though I am based in Minneapolis, Minnesota, where I'm watching freezing rain and sleet come down right now. Uh, I have a productivity uh, blog that I have out there called One Minute Office Magic, where you'll see these and many other tips if you want to keep up on a regular basis. I always like to remind uh, Tom of this though. Um, so our overlap in time. So way before the SharePoint days, I wrote a book in a past life uh, for <laughs> rational software. And in that, the book was published in early 2006. It was an Tom, IBM rational software. Yeah, and, and correct. IBM bought rational software. So, uh, and uh, Tom wrote a, a positive review for my book on my uh, Amazon page. So it's, um, it's funny because my worlds have collapsed so much because I was in Lotus Notes and the IBM stuff and then came into SharePoint and Microsoft. And all of a sudden my, my Lotus people are, are collapsing in my SharePoint world. I'm like, there's an episode of friends, which is, you know, basically the collapsing of my friend's world. And yeah. That's <laughs> yeah, pretty that's much it. where I'm at right now. Well, I'll we've just, got, we've got work, George, and I, we've got, you know, <laughs> social George and these well, Georges can't meet. <laughs> well, Tom, I just, I, I have to be honest. Like, I don't know if we'd be as good of friends if you had been, had given me a negative review. I'll just put that out there. So I'm so glad I didn't burn that bridge <laughs> to begin with. <laughs> Well, here we are with the current leaderboard. We do track for every one of these. And I'm going to start um, co consolidating some of these numbers. I'm going to, I think I'm going to have a rolling list of 10 just so that we can, uh, you know, so it doesn't fall off the page here. But currently the three core stats, Tom is ahead. The most rounds, the most events, and the most overall votes. Uh, so yeah, it, it's, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not trying to earn your sympathy votes. All votes are welcome, but uh, yeah. Anyway, we'll we'll get and into yet that. I'm still not an MVP. I That's just I true. crushes That's me every night when true. I go to bed. You're an MVP in my heart, Tom. All right. So okay, gonna, let's just keep going here. <laughs> this is getting engagement. bad. <laughs> so we're gonna take turns. So we're gonna share ten productivity tips. We do it within five rounds. 
we'll take turns. There are no duplicates. So it, meaning if my first tip is Tom's second tip, he can't share that again. He has to switch it up. And I just realized too, uh, about 10 minutes before going into this, that I forgot to add my extra one or two into this Whoa. deck. So if something happens, I'll have to go and open my other deck and it's not formatted. It's not going to be pretty, but uh, we'll talk about it if there's an overlap. <laughs> it's happened a couple times. Um, no duplicates, so we'll always, uh, we'll always uh, uh, share new tips. Um, the audience votes after each round, of course. Tom hits he, below the belt whenever possible because Tom has like less than, you know, what a foot or so on you <laughs> i think you can but your reach is is longer than your uh than your height so you know <laughs> basically i'm like square is what you're saying right <laughs> <laughs> and then we we do uh the the winner so you get to have that title for the entire month so i i won last month and still haven't uh taken tom on any of those stats so i'm i'm, I'm still catching up to tom's I'm greatness gonna try to make sure that doesn't happen Yes. So let's go ahead and let's get started. And we, we ended a little bit, a few minutes early. So we're going to try and keep things um, tight and moving forward quickly. So uh, we're out of here uh, on time. So let's get started with round one. Tom, are you ready? I am ready. Ding, ding, ding. Let's do All right. it. Oh, and people, please ask questions and stuff. We'll try and respond throughout as well. So, uh, so round one. So this is one of the biggest uh, sets of features to come to Microsoft Teams creating the breakout rooms in teams bum, bum, bum. so excited about this it's <laughs> of course it's it's being rolled out now it's not on my tenant i've seen plenty of the examples i'm watching i'm like in there every couple of days go in there and check is something something changed which is kind of good practice anyway because things happen so fast you need to be aware of what's happening uh, with your tenant what new features have become available across a number of different areas but this was one of the most requested and most necessary features for these large events. I've done a number of, you know, inside of teams, these uh, community driven uh, events. We've, you know, there's been SharePoint Saturday events that have kind of moved into it. Other like beyond just doing a webinar, more and more people using teams for these larger functions, especially within an organization you have a general meeting and there's been the, these kind of loosely, I'm doing air quotes here, best practices <laughs> of creating multiple channels and managing, juggling separate meetings to split off and talk about different topics. Well, now you have this ability. If we have a hundred people that are in this meeting and you want to split off and discuss five topics, you can have that, you could set up these five rooms and then either automatically divide the people evenly between those five rooms or four rooms or three rooms or two rooms, whatever that is. Um, or you can manually divide people of where you want specific people and move them in between these different discussion areas. So people can split off, have those discussions and then join back together in that one huge room. So because I don't yet have it on my tenant, I can't share some uh, you know, personal view and dig deeper into this. There's this great blog post, and I just had the link there, that Matt Wade did where he's walking through, talking about in detail everything about it. It's a great blog post. If you've, you're probably familiar with Matt Wade, uh, he's over at Jump365. He did the, uh, uh, the, 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 he's got the Microsoft 365 periodic table uh, and a bunch of other iconic uh, uh, you know, infographics. So definitely go check out that site. Um, and just get ready for this feature, hopefully rolling out to your organization this month. Um, so check with your admin uh, about uh, whether it's available or not. So you begin the process by you go in there and you say, hey, we've got this meeting coming up. We're going to set up. I want to, in this example, I want four rooms. I automatically want to split you know, the, the 40 people in the room, 10 per room, divide between there. Um, once you have it created, the admin always has the ability to go in there and juggle people around within that environment. So you create the rooms, rename them so you can make it very specific around the topic or, or name them like in this example, blue room, green room, yellow room, um, and, and then add people to that if needed, if, if in one of the discussions, um, you know, maybe you're doing this virtual team meeting where you're doing a reorg 
and uh, and a discussion happens where you know what we need another room and you can just add them on the fly and move people over in between those people don't have the ability just to move freely between the rooms the organizer has to assign them and move them over to those spaces um, but once they're uh, they're you know ready and live you push live they're out there people are moved into them um, and then once they've expired, let's say you said, hey, we're gonna take 20 minutes to discuss these individual topics. Each group picks a person to report back on and then we'll join back together at the bottom of the hour and share the results of our individual discussions. And so you then close the rooms and everybody goes back to that um, primary meeting. So it's just a, it's a really important uh, feature for the way that people are in this increasingly virtual remote work scenario um, need to work. And it's just great that we have this automated process now. Very nice. Um, uh, so, and Valerie's asking when the breakout rooms ability rolls out to the tenant, will the admins receive notification or have to, yeah. So admin, so you will, just like you will with anything in Microsoft 365, Office 365, the admin gets those notifications of, of features as they're being deployed. It's not always tenant to tenant. Like you don't say, hey, my tenant now has this feature. Um, you'll, you'll see a message that they've been, they're now generally available and that they've been rolled out across all tenants. I mean, Microsoft sent out an announcement. I don't have it uh, open here. I've got those, those uh, system messages saved, um, but I did get notification that the process had started um, to roll those out. Um, and so when I talk about admin, it's the admin for the environment, not the meeting facilitator. Yeah. So, yeah. So Debbie, it is literally the admin for uh, Microsoft 365 or for Teams. Yeah, this is <clears throat> something that has been anxiously awaited in our environment yep. because we still have a fair amount of Zoom usage. And ideally, they would like to get rid of Zoom usage for licensing and all that kind of stuff. So with this breakout room, they expect this to take another bite out of people who are using Zoom because they need this feature for whatever reason. So looking forward to seeing this one come in. All right, Tom, over to you. Okay. Well, uh, host disabled participant screen sharing. I thought I was a panelist. I thought I mattered. How about now? This will stop. Yes, I want to continue. Uh, thank you. That was yeah. very nice of you to allow me to participate in this meeting. <laughs> <laughs> I, I want you to fully really participate, Tom. <laughs> I want you to go down hard and not have any excuses, Tom. <laughs> Oh, well, I'm going to stay in the same vein, Microsoft Teams wise, but this one is not quite as, as major and or significant, but it can be probably a job saver if something happens. I call this the awkward setting <laughs> in the fact that I'm sure we've all been on calls before where we're sharing our screen, but we don't have the screen set to do not disturb mode. So when you get messages that pop up coming from somebody, like somebody who's in the chat with you, uh, or maybe you're in an office, ha, huh, and somebody's overlooking your shoulder and they see something pop up, it could be that the person who is commenting to you is saying something possibly derogatory towards the speaker or God, they are stupid, whatever. It can be really awkward. Well, now you can turn off message preview in Microsoft Teams chat notification. So in the example that we have here, Sandra, my coworker, sent me a message and no, this was not during a real meeting. This was basically all set up just so we could pull this off. But um, she sent me a message that could be awkward and career limiting in this particular case. Uh, so what I decided to do was turn off the message preview. So if I'm in Teams, I click on the little uh, profile icon, which is my picture up in the upper right corner, go down to settings, under, uh, under, <laughs> under notifications and appearance and sound, you have the ability to show message preview turned off. So it's just a click here, it turns on, click here, it turns off, very simple there. And then 
now when I get a message from Sandra or from anybody else in that point, it'll say that she sent me a message, but it's not actually going to display the content of that message. Um, caveat on this, I know one of the things I'm, I really kind of like in Teams is when a message pops up, I usually have the ability to click and respond directly in the notification box without having to go into chat. If you turn message preview off, you're not going to get that ability because you don't see what the message says. So there's no real good way you can respond to them. So if that's an important feature to you that you want to keep, you're going to want to leave message notification turned on. And you're probably going to want to make sure to say, hey, when I'm in do not disturb mode, don't show message preview or don't show message pop-ups or anything. Um, but this is, again, one of those things that it may really not matter to you. However, if somebody sends you a message and it pops up on the screen and the wrong person is looking at it, it could be really awkward and potentially career limiting. So think about this thing, see if it fits in with the scenarios that you have and make that change if you need to. Awesome, and I will unmute. I was going to say, Excellent. with that, you can throw the you can I'm throw the thing launch, up. Launch the poll, and yep. so everybody, please go in and vote. So breakout rooms to, to turning off message preview. Ooh, we can now see the number of, of votes real time. I like this. Yeah, because you're the the uh, co-host. I'm, I'm well. Okay, that makes sense. <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen this before. All I see is that it's up there, and then you tell me who won, and I trust you. Well, you're, you've been ahead, so, I mean, come on. Well, I just dropped by one point. Oh, there we go. We're going to get really close to a tie here again. We've only had ties, like, what, twice? A couple times. Once. Any other votes? Oh, there's, we're going to close it in five seconds. <laughs> well, the stress on this. I don't think I like seeing this. <laughs> One. Any other final votes to break the tie? Come on, click it, click it. Oh, yeah. ah! <laughs> I do not like this feature. <laughs> oh, that was great. Some advantages to having control. <laughs> I do oh, not like this. That's funny. Uh, so yeah, that oh. was, I wasn't by. Thank you, whoever did that last vote there. I hate you me. all. I hate you all. <laughs> Uh, okay, Tom, round two, over to you. Okay, sounds good. Let me go ahead and close that. Valerie is asking a question. Is there a way to totally hide the notifications that usually show up over my chat panel when full screen? Yeah, I hate that. Um, you can turn notifications off, but then that has its own ramifications. There is a feature that's coming out, I want to say within the next month or so, where your notifications in Teams can be sent to your operating system notification thing. So you can have Windows notifications that hook in and show your Teams things. That may give you more options to be able to place where you see those. I hate the fact it's in the lower right corner because it goes right over the top of things I'm usually trying to do and it keeps popping up and I keep having to clear it and I start typing again into a chat and it pops up over the top of it again. It's yeah. Well, it's the other nice thing about that is being able to set control so that if you're in a meeting or doing some other activity that it knows to mute those things. So right. having centralized control is good. But I mean, what I typically do personally is, so I use Rambox. So it's kind of like using, uh, having multiple tabs in a browser open. Um, but Rambox is kind of centralizes that. And I have each of the, primary teams environments that I'm in. So I see the visual notifications, but I turn off all of the in-app notifications. Mm -hmm. They're not popping up on the desktop. And so okay. I, I, I see them when I want to see them. But yeah, out of the, out of the box, you don't yeah. have quite the control no. you'd like to have. Okay. So let's go to the next one. Scheduling page publishing in SharePoint online. This is another thing that during our migration in 2019 to SharePoint Online, our Stratcom area was like, we need to be able to schedule publishing. I'm like, yeah, that's not going to happen. Well, now it's finally happened. <laughs> so <clears throat> never, this is... Never, 
<laughs> pretty much so <laughs> it's funny because it's reference to an animated movie so. yes <laughs> oh god now i'm gonna have that little mouse in my head all day long <laughs> you're welcome you're welcome <laughs> um, so for this feature if you have a modern page library which is often called site pages uh if you've just taken a default what comes out of the box type thing when you get a new site that's a modern page library and with that modern page library you can actually schedule pages or news posts or whatever to show up on your site at a particular time. So if you have this feature, you go out to um, your particular uh, page library that you have out there, you, sit, yeah, pull, you should see an option for scheduling. And when you click that, it comes up and says, do you want to enable scheduling for this particular library. It's not going to be an overall everything out there. So you can have one library where you do have scheduling and have other libraries where you don't. But in this particular case, you go ahead and turn scheduling on, keeping in mind that if you turn scheduling off, things that are already scheduled to publish will keep that schedule and you would have to go in and actually turn scheduling off for each individual item if you want to push it out right away. But this is how you enable it. You're now active. So now when you go out and create a new page, instead of having that save or publish button, you have one called schedule. And if you look down at your side panel, you have the ability to say, I want scheduling turned on for this particular post or this particular page. And I want it to be published on this date at this time. Once you get that filled in, you click schedule then you're good to go. And this is not going to show up on your site until that date and time shows up. If you look at the page when you go into it after you've saved it and scheduled it, you'll see exactly when it's scheduled for. The date, the time, you can edit it. <clears throat> now, when you look at the pages in the site library and you just get the list of all your pages, you should also see a calendar and clock icon after the name of the page which also signifies that this page is actually being scheduled for some particular date in the future to show up. If you want, you can also go out and see the scheduling option. If you just click on the item that you're looking at and click on the information icon that's up in the upper right corner of the menu bar, that actually brings up the page detail panel. And on the page detail panel, you can either turn scheduling off or turn scheduling back on again, put a new date out there, do any of those things. The one thing that you need to keep in mind though, if you actually make a change to a page that has been scheduled, it actually turns scheduling off on that page and it would immediately appear. So if you're in a situation where you need to make a pay or need to make a change to a page that's been scheduled for use or scheduled for publishing at some point in the future, you may need to make a mental note of when that schedule is supposed to trigger. And when you make the change, make sure you turn scheduling back on and put that date back out there. Once you do that, you should be good to go. And I think that's it on this one. Yeah, that's a, you're, you're right. I mean, th we, this is something that people have asked about, talked about for a long time. Mm -hmm. and it's great to see that, that feature that's in there. I mean, this is especially important if you're for regional uh, focused content. I mean, it, it's, it's one of those discussions I have about kind of broader marketing communications initiatives with companies who are global, where the time of day of release of that content for a global audience is less relevant. But for most organizations that are more geographically specific, the time of day that you release news and when it's consumed is very important. Uh, yeah, and I... And, and oh, obviously ahead, you have it well in advance. You know. Yeah, I don't think it's that big of a deal necessarily for pages. It's huge for news stories, right. especially if you have a view of like the top five news stories on your homepage and you want to put out something that says, hey, open enrollment starts today, but you want to get everything set up. You want people to look at it. You want people to make sure it's all OK, but you want to take care of it right now. That's a time when this really works out well. Right. Excellent. Well, jumping into my round two entry, uh, love the new poll capability. This is another one of those things that uh, people have been asking for uh, within Teams for quite some time. Um, so you're, you're seeing more and more of this, you know, the, the integration across 
uh, the various workloads. And this is one of those things that was kind of a key missing capability. Um, and it's, uh, uh, I'll tell you, this is a lot easier for the, the comparison I always see is people using Zoom and how easy it is in, in the webinar platforms to go and create poll questions. Well, hey, look, I run polls in Zoom webinars <laughs> and this is much easier um, over inside of Teams. So, uh, so that's the, uh, the link to read more about this, but let me kind of walk you through that, the process. So let's say you have a standing organizational uh, meeting. So I mean, here I do this uh, Monday morning, every week um, live stream. And so I added up as a tab, I added the polls app to that. So it's Microsoft forms driven. So I went and added that as a tab and then I created a new poll for that. Um, so as you get the standard Microsoft Forms user experience. I went and you know added the question with the responses. It's not complex. It doesn't have the logic. If it, this person answers this, then question two is this. Like that's not the purpose of this. This is like a pulse survey. Um, you can have multiple answers there. Allow multiple responses um, back at the selecting different criteria. Um, like if you're asking what do people want for lunch and have 20 different options and somebody might select all of that, you know, <laughs> the options, but you, so, but it's just, it's very straightforward, but then of course you could have, you can create um, multiple uh, questions and, uh, and, and spin those out. So once you go and create them in that polls tab, um, so you see them marked as draft. I have multiple um, drafts there. It's my, my fun question down below this. Do we like Sean's t-shirt this week? We always talk about what t-shirts we're wearing and basic nerdy topics. I was wearing a SharePoint shirt yesterday and I like the third answer there. As long as there's no nudity, it works for me with Sean and his t-shirts. But anyway, um, so you've got those polls in draft form there in the tab. Um, when you launch it, it shows as live and you can, you know, you as the creator can respond right there. Um, but you can launch the poll, you can see the drafts, so you can, uh, figure out the timing of these. Now you can launch these polls. Like this is a standing weekly meeting and you can launch the polls before an official meeting is happening. You can do it live within the meeting. You can do it after the meeting in the running chat. So it will actually show up in the chat um, rather than the meeting. So this is what that looks like. Uh, so, well, here, once it's live, you can also click on and see the results in real time. And then over in the chat, you see that it's posted there. And here I, because I wanted the view, the, the, the live results. So people can then vote and then they immediately see the results there uh, in line. Um, so it's just, a, it's a great way that you can get a sense of like ask people what they're interested in talking about in the next weekly meeting. So if you have a running team meeting, for example, you can poll and, and view those results over time. And then in the live meeting, of course, uh, or in the, in the meeting itself, and here's just an example. So I can, there's the little forms or polls icon up at the top and you can click on that and see all of those polls as the admin and then launch those and they'll show up within the chat of that meeting as well. And it'll show up both in the chat, the running chat over in Teams, over in that channel um, or, or in that, that Teams chat, I should say, as well as in the meeting itself. So um. I don't know if <laughs> Jess uh, is asking, is anyone who said as a presenter, create a poll? Um, uh, yeah, so it's for presenters to go in there and see. So yeah, there's a, uh, you, you, you can't expand who is able to, to do that, but yeah, generally presenters as well as organizers can go and create those. Cool. All right. It, it, <clears throat> I was actually in a um, training session yesterday and the guy was using Microsoft Forms yeah. for actually um, calling or actually getting um, the, uh, knowledge checks. And then he would let it go oh, for yeah. like 75% yeah. of the stuff and then show the results. And that actually worked really well. I still have to say one of the things that is the coolest forms integrations, and we've covered this in the past, but is where you integrate it into your PowerPoint as well. And you can host it out on OneDrive or SlideShare 
or whatever. And, and, and so kind of a similar thing, you can have video segments in a slide to make sure that people are watching that. And then midway through quiz them to find out if they actually watched that or read right. the, through the presentation. It, it's really cool. You can do that in a sway. Um, and, and so it's a, it's a great way to build educational content and test people's knowledge. Well, you're dusting me in this one, my friend. Well, if you've not yet voted, you can still vote. Still open, still out there. We'll give people another <laughs> five seconds. Vote early, vote uh, open. My apologies to people. If you're watching over the live stream on Facebook, I'm not checking there on any comments. I don't know, Tom, do you? I, I don't have that open right okay. now, unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, all right. Uh, can we get the link on how to add polls to a tab and directions on how to set up a poll? Um, yeah. So let me, uh, here in a minute, I'll grab the link and I'll share it into the chat. So the link that's in the slides, is that what you're asking for? or actually a walkthrough. Yeah. So yeah, that'll, and of course the slides, we make all the slides available today. So the video recording, the, the, the slides will be available all out on Buckley planet. And I'll share that link at the end as well, but I'll, uh, I'll paste the link here in a minute into uh, when I'm not presenting, I'll paste it into the chat. For a minute. <laughs> Sounds good. Okay. All right. I'm going to end the poll. And yeah, that was a route. Yeah. I got routed. Uh, thank you, everybody, for voting there. All right, let's jump into round three. Uh, add your personal calendar to your Outlook work account. Another new feature. Tom, you were talking the last couple of times we did this about how you're, you've pretty much moved over to using Outlook for the web. Yes. Yeah, and and it is. It, it, there's a lot of really cool AI-driven capabilities that are happening over in the Outlook, uh, you know, for the for the web, um, and this is one of those things that is if you're like me, you're juggling between work and multiple personal calendars, and keeping those things straight can be a little bit difficult. And of course, I, I'm a desktop Outlook user. I use for some of these features. I'm using more and more the web. Uh, versions of some of the Office apps because there's just a lot of cool AI features. But here is something that just makes it very easy. I'm going to walk you through the process and it, it will actually color code the work and personal uh, calendars to make it easy to go between the two. So, so in this, and I'm already in the view because for some reason I don't want to share with you all of my email that's in my inbox. <laughs> um, but yeah, so what I did is I, I, so I clicked on the calendar view um, down below. You can see the icon there, which gets you into uh, this view that you're seeing. And then you select the add calendar um, to get the process started. And that will take you over to this dialog box. And you'll see, of course, the add the personal calendars uh, you know, item pretty straightforward there. You see a lot of other options there. Uh, if you're not familiar with, it's always fun to go and explore some of those other features, things that you can do there. Um, but uh, like, I have no idea. I just saw that, you know, team snap. I don't know what that is. Uh, but anyway, so uh, in this example, so I'm going to add, uh, so my family, my kids, no matter how much I try to train them and the fact that they have, uh, uh, you know, Microsoft 365 accounts, uh, they're still have, they all have Google uh, email addresses and will send me on a regular basis. Hey, we should do this as a family and send me a Google calendar item. And I just like, I don't know what that means. Send it to me and something. That <laughs> you are not my son anymore. <laughs> <laughs> but here is something I'm getting enough of these notifications, especially from community stuff, from meetups and things like that that uh, it makes sense for me to be able to see this. So I go in, I'm, I'm selecting my Google account. I'm prompted there. Of course, it goes through. It says, hey, look, you're about to give away the cow um, with, with all of the, uh, not just drinking the milk there, folks. That was the, uh, yeah, anyway, it's the saying there. It um, didn't work as well as you expected, did it? <laughs> no, but it's, <laughs> I've approved all the access privileges. And then you get this confirmation, okay, the, the account has been added. And as you add, if you have multiple personal accounts that you connect, you'd see them all from this view of everything, just like it normally see, uh, you know, all of the external connections that you have there and easily go and disconnect them if possible. 
Uh, and and I won't show you what's on the combined calendar because it would then provide insight in the personal calendar, but you then see it over on the right side, the second calendar down the below, it's purple. So it's color coded all of those items. So you can see I already had red and blue of personal and work. And then I've added additional calendar of purple items. So you then see them all in one place so that when you're in blocking out time and scheduling stuff, you're, you are more aware of those, those personal items. And of course, Anybody else that has access that doesn't have a, a right access but can view your visibility, your free busy, they would see that time as blocked out uh, and but not see the detail of those personal items. Uh, so I, look, I, I, I'm a small company, so I manage everything on my one calendar typically, except for these family activities. So I will put personal items and color code them on my work calendar but I will, if because I do have uh, people who have access, right access to my calendar, um, and I've had an admin, a part-time admin, and so I and I lock those items so they can't see the detail, just the time is blocked. Um, so there's multiple ways that you can accomplish this. But again, if you're using multiple personal accounts, having it all consolidated in that one view for Outlook on the, for the web is just fantastic. Can your company actually block you from adding personal calendars? Because I was under the impression we were blocked in our organization for that. Uh, I, I think you can block that. There's there's a lot more. There's a lot more maturity in what you can control with okay. uh, with with Outlook uh, online. But yeah, that would be that's a good question. Yeah, I I. I just tend to add everything directly to my work calendar um, because yep. I don't really pay much attention to my Gmail calendar and I really don't have an Outlook calendar personal. Um, so yeah, but one of the reasons I haven't shared that internally is because I thought, I don't know that we allow that, but. Yeah, it should be, could. that's a pretty easy question over to uh, an admin to find out if that's possible or not. And because of this new feature, they, they might actually consider opening that up. That could be. Let me go ahead and share my screen. Maybe. There we go. There we go. Okay. So mine is a Teams one. That seems to be kind of a prevailing theme today. <clears throat> and this is the ability to actually transfer an in-progress Teams meeting from one device to another, which is great if you're a Christian Buckley and you've got you know an hour meeting and you're right up against something where you need to leave, but the meeting's going long and you really can't delay it, but you can't delay the other thing that you're doing. This gives you the ability to actually take the Teams meeting that you might be on, say your laptop, and actually transfer it over to your phone to where you don't miss anything and which I think is like really cool. I really like this feature. So to set this up for the example here, I was in a Teams meeting on my laptop and I went ahead and took my iPhone up on my Outlook calendar on my iPhone, saw that I had the option to actually join a meeting that was in progress. So this transferred a team meeting one. So once I did that, it comes up with this particular screen saying, do I wanna add this device to the meeting or do I wanna transfer this? So if I was sitting in a room for, with three or four other people and I wanted to be able to take the rest of the call on my phone, but still leave them logged in wherever we're at, I could just say, add this device. It's now on my phone. The other meeting's still going on on my laptop. I can walk away, life's grand. If it's just me on the laptop and I want to walk away with the call now on my phone and kill the laptop meeting, then I just use the transfer to this device. And then when you get that, it comes up and says, okay, check your video, check your mic, make sure everything looks okay. Once you're you know, sure that you're not gonna get an unfortunate video shot of yourself that you don't want, or you just wanna be in listen mode and you want your mic off, then when you click transfer now, everything transfers over and you're good to go. You're now on your phone. 
basically very few people can even know that you did that, but you're able to go on with your day, take whatever, you know, meeting that you have in a different location, be able to have it on your phone. I find this is really cool to not force you to stay in one location and to have maximum flexibility in terms of what your schedule is and what you're doing in the actual meetings. Especially important for that uh, in our busy lifestyles where we're, uh, we're jetting between office and mobile and another location <laughs> and then rapidly evacuating a location and <laughs> back mobile and it all could happen within a 30 minute meeting. <laughs> jetting that's that's a euphemism right <laughs> nobody does that these days <laughs> uh all right so uh yeah oh and i and i did share the link by the way if you didn't see it in the chat uh, to oh, the polling feature and so we'll leave that out there so uh, adding personal calendars to outlook and tom's tip and sorry i'm clicking through, I had to, it, they don't make it easy to go pull that uh, a <laughs> link from the slide, shut everything down, resharing stuff. Yeah. One of the reasons I don't look at Facebook while I'm doing this is I have a hard time, you know, walking and chewing gum at the same time. Uh, context switching. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> it's like usually when I'm in a meeting with my coworker and she's like, would you like me to take notes? I'm like, yeah, because as soon as the meeting starts, I get into the meeting and notes are like, what are those? <laughs> All right. A few more seconds for the votes. Five, four, three. Doesn't matter, Christian. You're not catching up on this one. No, I know. <laughs> Congrats. Oh, one more vote for you at the end there. Yeah. All right, congrats there, 88% to Tom. Cool. Wow, these people did not like my last tip. Okay. Oh, they, they liked it. They just liked mine more. There you go. Okay. Unless, so, unless, Tom, you're sending out email threats to people in your organization that you won't support them. If, uh, I'm, not, I'm not doing threats, <laughs> though I did answer one saying, hey, Alicia, just ping me afterwards. I'll show you what's going on with the emoticon. So I would like to consider them, you know, inducements. Yeah. <laughs> so this one is something I should use a lot more, um, but I haven't done a lot of new list creation lately, but this is really kind of cool. Looking forward to this one. This is creating a new list from an existing list in SharePoint Online. So this can be a situation where say that you have a brand new site that you're doing and you have a list in a different site that has everything laid out the way that you want it. And you'd really like to get a copy of that list and ideally even the data, that would be nice, but you don't know how to do that. And you're gonna have to recreate it from scratch, which is a real pain. This feature actually allows you to create a copy of that list over in your new site and you're off and ready to go with no effort whatsoever. So in this particular case, when you go out to site contents, you click on the new option, you'll see your list come up. That's pretty normal. And keep in mind that you need to have at least design level access on the site to do this, or you need to be like full control. <clears throat> so you can't just say, I'm a contributor and I'm gonna go create new lists because that's something that requires a higher level of access. So when you get this, you can create a new list like you've probably all done in the past, or you can create a new list from Excel, which is a cool feature in its own right. But you also have this option to say from an existing list. And what it does is it gives you a list, and this is more your recent ones, because if I had this list, it would like go on forever, because I'm a site admin, or I'm a uh, SharePoint admin. <clears throat> but it shows you the most recently used sites that you're doing, so you can pick a site, in this case, I used our SharePoint migration one, and then I can choose a list from that SharePoint migration site that I want to use as my template. And I can say, do I want to show up in site navigation? That's fine. Um, and then it's gonna go ahead, run off, copy everything over, life's grand, it's awesome. The thing that I see as a really good use case for this is if you want to, oh, say that you have a project template-ish thing 
that you like to have everybody use and there's certain lists that you want every project site to have, but you have to keep thinking, well, I'm gonna go copy this from the last one that I did. What you could actually do is you could set up a project template site, have all your lists out there, don't have to have any data in it, but you can have them all laid out. And then when you're creating your new um, project template site and you wanna start bringing in the lists, you can always use this from an existing list feature to copy over your list from the template site so that everything looks the same. If you wanna make a change, you can go make it to the template site. And then next time people are creating new lists, they'll get the latest updates and the changes that you've made. So again, this is really cool. It creates the columns, it creates all the views, it creates all the formatting. Everything's gonna be there for you when you use this. So if you're used to having to go through and recreate lists in every site that you do, cause you want them to all look the same, definitely take a look at this um, feature cause this is gonna save you a ton of time and obviously add a great deal of consistency to your layouts. And of course, and all the ones that you create here, you are visible over through the lists, mm -hmm. uh, home app over in Teams. Yep. Cool stuff. Yep, it, it is cool stuff. All right, let me switch this back over. Of course, the control moved. <laughs> uh, yes, and there we go. All right. And so here you see a running theme here with me as well. <laughs> I'm still on the uh, outlook for the web because there's just some really cool stuff that's coming. So this is something that, uh, and, and there's been a number of features over the last couple of years where they've really talked about the, you know, the contextual, the card based uh, interaction with the Microsoft product so that you have a richer experience here. I don't have to go clicking through opening up multiple items to be able to take action in this case, around meeting invites. And I'm using just the Microsoft provided um, gift here and not my own because it. I, I was in trying to build uh, over the weekend some samples and it just, there was too much blocking out, not enough showing rich experience with, uh, you know, in, in my own environment. Uh, I don't have a demo environment set up, so it was production. And uh, hence, I just simplified things and keep it here, but you can see all of the rich capability. This card interface allows you to go in as you're getting the, the meeting invites coming through. Um, the, one of my favorite features, so of course you can, um, you know, right from this control, you can uh, uh, you know, the, do your RSVP. Um, you can toggle between any of the messages, the discussions that are happening with people who have been invited to that meeting, uh, as well as the, the meeting details who's the organizer, who's responded, who's been invited, who's responded. So having that kind of visibility and then being able to dig into, you know, relevant emails that have happened around that meeting invite, um, just so that it's just a really cool little feature. Um, so this is another one of those things, which is first it's come to uh, Outlook uh, for the web, not yet sure what, you know, how many of these features uh, are going to be enabled for the desktop application. Microsoft is really pushing people to use the browser version of more and more of these uh, applications. And so that's why you're seeing, you know, Microsoft has been saying the last decade, uh, cloud first. We're developing first for these cloud experiences. And so that's where the innovation will come the fastest. Uh, and so that's where you see the capabilities like this. And of course you can, you also have the ability to go in through the mobile, the mobile apps for, I mean, I'm a huge fan of Outlook mobile app. Uh, you know, so I do a ton on that, but you do have the ability to go in and, and automate how you respond to, um, to meetings. And when you are invited to a meeting, if there's not an option uh, for online, you can um, add an online for any meetings that you create or make that suggestion back to um, creators. So that's something, you know, obviously 
more and more uh, of us are working remote or all of us are working remote right now, just about <laughs> um, even when we go into the office for those that do, it's, you know, very much part-time. Uh, so every meeting should have a mobile option by default. Uh, but this, it just makes it so much easier now to, uh, to see those responses, especially if your schedule's like, I mean, I'm sure we're all the same um, looking back at uh, looking at my calendar and all of the, uh, the, the, the weekly meetings and on the, the ad hoc meetings and webinars and things that are going on, I'm having this ability. So I'm not having to click into multiple views to get access to all that information, be able to do everything from that card interface is just a huge productivity boost. Very true. So with that, launch the poll. Give people a couple minutes. Okay, you can close the poll now. Nope, nope, don't close the poll now. <laughs> Fake news, I was ahead, and all of a sudden, next two minutes, more your stuff came in. <laughs> These are phony ballots. <laughs> uh, I, just, I was thinking like the office, the basketball games, like, uh, well, I think, you know, it's foul. I think we should just end it here. It's like, who wins? Well, I don't know, whoever's ahead right now. That's you guys. Well, I guess we win. Oh, uh... Uh, Reject all the votes. You're behind. Count all the votes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, which would have happened either way. And we yes, all. This is very true. The world we live in now. Yep. Uh, all right. Uh, five more seconds. Four. So close. Three, so close. Two. One. All right. God, you, you're you're going to get the session win one, here. But, uh, yeah. All right. So let's get into we have eight more minutes left so we can do this tom uh last one look at that it's another outlook for the web <laughs> so folks that have been watching these sessions for a while are aware of, so i'm a huge task management guy i'm a big fan of the microsoft 365 task strategy that's happening across the board where essentially is if there's a task that's created and assigned to you somewhere within uh, you know, uh, teams within planner uh, and eventually within uh, a project online, all of those things will generate because that second half, the project online part, it's not fully integrated yet. Uh, I don't have timelines for any of that. But if someone somewhere assigns a task to you, eventually all roads will point back to that to-do app. So you'll have a personal view of every task that's assigned to you across any plan. You'll have that today. If, if, there, if, if you have tasks assigned to you and 10 different planner plans uh, within Teams or within planner standalone, you'll see all of those tasks within the task app in Team or within Microsoft To-Do. Um, so you know, beyond that, um, we all receive emails that have a bunch of items that, hey, I should go take action on this. Um, there's a bunch of tasks that came out of this email. Well, now you can go select that text, create a task right there on the fly. And let me walk you through that process very quickly. So here I've sent myself an email for this example. So I sent it from my Gmail over to my, uh, my office web. I'm looking at Outlook for the web. And here's some things that I need to accomplish this next week. And so I want to make sure that I have them in tasks and I'm tracking them in to do. Uh, and so I, what I do is I go in and I select the, the, some of the text that needs to be added. And then you see the icons, like I can either discuss that, I can email that to people and discuss that item further via uh, Outlook, or I can create a task. So I'm going to actually click on that task button and create the task and it opens up the dialogue on the right side. As you see, it'll the AI will go and pull all of the task related items from that bulleted list, that numbered list, and, and instantly create those tasks. Now I can over on the right side, I can of course email them. If I click on this on the radio button on the left side of those tasks, it'll complete them, uh, mark them as complete, or I can highlight them with a star. Uh, I can see all of those that are recent, com recently completed as well. And what this does, if you then click down into the task button, what you're also seeing, there's kind of a sub announcement here, if you're not aware of this, for Outlook for the web, they now have done the to-do integration with Outlook for the web. 
So again, this is not on the desktop app. You still see that uh, uh, legacy or classic uh, Outlook tasks view in the desktop, but out for the online, you now have the to-do integration. And so when I click on the tasks, you can see that it highlights within the tasks view, that task home, and there's the four items. And what's cool about this is you do automatically in, so I grabbed this screenshot from my phone. I instantly saw uh, that I had the tasks were created over in to do on my desktop app or my mobile app. So this is, this is really cool. Um, the next step here, and this is very similar to um, what we've been doing in, in, uh, in, in OneNote, where you can go and create a, so you can actually take a bulleted list in OneNote, go in and select that item and flag it. And that would actually show up as a, a, you know, a tagged item. Um, or, or convert that to a essentially a flagged email in the old uh, Outlook desktop vernacular. Um, so it, we're, we've not seen it yet, but uh, I believe what OneNote is going to be doing is just like what's happening with Outlook for the web, where it will show up automatically within task view when they finish that, um, that integration. But anyway, this is a, it's a big deal. I, I get a lot of these emails where I see a couple line items and I'm like, I need to go take an action right there. And what I generally do is grab that email, drag it and drop it down into a calendar item or down into a task. And then I edit it down to, you know, what the actual task is. So it's a multi-step process to do that. Now I can just simply float over that, click on the task icon, and it will open that up and cre automatically create those to-do tasks. This one's really cool. I plan on using this one as soon as I get off the call because yeah, <clears throat> yeah, I tend to live in my inbox and I don't get out of there where now I can just pull the one little piece I want and go that route. I love your third task though. That is awesome. It's 2020 yeah. time has no meeting. to work. <laughs> yeah, <I know. laughs> okay. Uh, since uh, yeah. we're getting real close, I will go ahead and take mine now. And on mine, I'm going to do one again in GASP, Microsoft Teams. <laughs> Who would have thought? Docker. Uh, we're in the process of creating or of moving over from Skype on-prem. And one of the things that people were not really thrilled about in uh, Teams chat was the fact that there was no, really no grouping that they used to have in all their uh, Skype contacts where they could say coworkers and you know, to follow and blah, 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 so on and so forth. Well, now you can actually create contact groups, and it was not really obvious as to how to get there, uh, but I found it. it's like, this is kind of cool, and everybody really liked this when I shared it. So what you do is you go into your chat column there, and up in where it says chat, go ahead and click the drop down and go into contacts. So that actually then gives you all your contacts you're going to be working with. And at the very bottom of your list of contacts, you have the ability to create a new contact group. So this could be team members, this could be, you know, project related, whatever. And these are the people that you want to have within this group. So it's easier to find them instead of trying to, you know, create a chat from scratch and see if it found somebody and pulled in all the content. This makes it a lot easier to find the people. So once you create your new contact group, I call this my Spark One Tips contacts. Click to create. And now I have this new group out there in my contacts list. And when I want to add somebody, all I have to do is click on add a contact to this group. I put in part of the name, comes up with whatever name selections I have, click add. And now this person is part of my Spark One Tips contacts. And so <clears throat> when I'm looking at my contacts, I can see the people who are in particular groups instead of just having a big long list of people who are in my chat that I have to go out and try to find and that can be really problematic. So this is a really good way to group all your contacts if you need to and make it a lot easier for you to see people that matter in certain contexts. I like you, uh, uh, people that matter in certain contexts. <laughs> well, you matter a lot, just not in all my work contexts. <laughs> in this particular yeah. contact, you matter a whole lot. If I don't get to three to two, you're not going to matter half as much, but you know. 
You know, just kind of a sister feature that they, when you're sharing that, it, it, there was a conversation I had yesterday. We were talking about creating these, you know, essentially a distribution group within teams and uh, kind of a, a, another way of, it's, it's not the same thing exactly, but creating tags mm, yes. is another way kind of on the fly around certain topics. Um, so that allows people to go and course search on and follow tags and be notified when you know that comes up. So, um, you know, that that's a, it's another great feature. It, it's one of the difficulties is we have all of these different conversations, all these various collaborations that are happening. Like, how do you keep up? How do you follow these things to be able to like tag certain channels? Um, so the ones that are most relevant, that are most active in, that are there within my navigation to subscribe or follow certain tags and to make sure that you have your know, DL set up are all important ways that you can surface the right content uh, at the right time. So um, plus the nice thing yeah. about tags is you can actually put the tag out there, if I remember correctly, and it will notify everybody who's following that tag. So, yep. Let me pull back control there. All right. And we're going to call it there. Any final votes? Yeah, I got Tom's another one. Got it. <laughs> that didn't work out like as you expected. Did it? <laughs> uh, that's all right. Yeah, Mickey does ask, can you alphabetize your contacts? I don't know. I don't know if that's by default. It, that would make sense. That it or would you could be, drag up and down. I I'll have to give that a yeah. shot. I'm not sure. Yeah. Okay. Something to do there. Well, Tom took that round. What is that? What's, I wasn't keeping track. So is that? You won. Three, two. You're well, welcome. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Uh, well, let, so really quick, I know we're out of time here. So I guess I took it this time, but I think by overall votes, um, Tom is probably going to maintain Yeah, we may, we may not have unanimous uh, Tom anymore, though. That may get really close to yeah, cool. having some split stats out there. Well, I will have the combined slides out of the blog. Uh, so be sure to go in. Now, one, if you've not already signed up, we're doing this again at the end of December, closing out the year with the December dust up. So that's on the 29th. And, uh, and then you can, of course, go to, if you've not been out there, so visit my site at buckleyplanet.com. And up in the top, you have productivity tips. And there is the complete listing of every one of these that Tom and I have done. And if you've not looked at one of these blog posts, if you click on, so you can see where you can you know, register for, um, here it was November, December, um, but there's the blog itself, the video or, and the slides. But if you click on the blog, the blog has the video and the link to the slides, but there's also a list of each of the, a bulleted list of the 10 tips that we shared with a link to that discussion within the video. So you don't have to watch the entire 60 minutes. You can jump right to that tip uh, being shared within the video. Um, so please uh, go and check that out and bookmark that. And I should have this all live tonight and uh, share that out via the social channels. So if you follow Tom or myself, then you should see that via the social. Wonderful. As always, a fun time. Always great. And uh, yeah, thanks a lot, Tom. And we'll, uh, we'll see everybody back in December. Everyone stay safe. Have a great Thanksgiving. All right. Talk to you later. Bye.